Aloha, everybody. It is I, the Great Clement. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at an Xbox 360 beat 'em up game, which is also available for the PlayStation 3 as well as PC, and is a sequel to an established franchise that's been around since the arcade and NES days. Oh, and it's developed by WayForward, so you know the visuals and soundtrack are amazing. <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, is Double Dragon Neon. When I think of modern day 2D beat em up games that I would recommend to people, I always think of two games. One of which is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which unfortunately is delisted and you can no longer download it if you haven't already, which really sucks because that game is amazing and I've actually done a let's play on that already. But the other game is Double Dragon Neon. Sometimes it's pretty overlooked by people because, you know, they grew up with the NES games and they think that Neon doesn't have anything new to offer them. Oh my god, this game is so fantastic. It has an amazing soundtrack, a great combat system, and it's fun to play by yourself or with a friend. This game has local co-op and only local, so you can't play online with a buddy. And unfortunately, this Let's Play is going to be a solo Let's Play. So if you were interested in seeing some co-op action, sorry, there's tons of YouTube videos out there. But this is a pretty fantastic single-player experience anyway, so uh, let's get into it, folks. Let's play Double Dragon Neon. Jesus! Marion? Oh man, not this again. So if you've played the NES Double Dragon, this is all looking familiar, isn't it? The title theme, when we saw the Mission 1 title card pop up, the music that's playing during this stage right now, this is all taken directly from the original NES Double Dragon game. And so some of you might be watching this thinking, oh, is this a remake of Double Dragon? Only the first level! As soon as we get to level 2 onwards, this game is going to get a lot crazier and a lot zanier, and trust me, you want to watch all the way to the end of this video before you decide if you don't want to keep up with this particular playthrough, because uh, Double Dragon Neon is very different and it's very, very awesome. <laughs> so anywho, uh, we're playing as Billy Lee. He has a brother named Jimmy, who you play as in co-op. Uh, in single player, you're always forced to be Billy Lee, which kind of sucks for me, because, I mean, it, it's not like they're standout characters that are like, oh man, Jimmy's so much better than Billy. It's just, Jimmy has the red outfit and he has brown hair. <laughs> My favorite color is red. I, I'm a brunette myself, so if I had the option, I would play as Jimmy, but uh, in single player, you're limited to Billy. Not that it matters, they have the exact same moveset and whatever, but, uh... Anyway, folks, a whole bunch of bad dudes just stole our girlfriend Marion, so we gotta go beat the crap out of everybody. All the Williams, all the Lindas, and yes, they all share the same name. <laughs> that is established, there's gonna be a lot of jokes about that in this playthrough. Uh, they're all Linda, and the guys are all Williams, and then eventually we'll meet some new enemy types who are all insert name here, and uh, I don't know how it works, that's how Double Dragon rolls, okay? Double Dragon is not the greatest when it comes to lore. I looked up the wiki before I did this playthrough to see if I could come up with any any interesting background information I could give you about the Lee brothers, right? They mastered an art called Shinsotskin, Shinsotskin, I think? I forget how you pronounce it, but they had a father who taught them and tra trained them in martial arts, and gangs patrol their cities, their unnamed, unknown city, and, uh... You just have to go beat up people who keep stealing your girlfriend. That's pretty much the plot to every Double Dragon game. <laughs> For the most part, anyway. You have a punch button, you have a kick button, you have a grab button, and you have a jump button. 
Uh, but Double Dragon Neon also has a crouch button, which is used to dodge enemy attacks. And what happens when you dodge enemy attacks is that your character momentarily grow glows red. That means you have your Gleam on, and when you have Gleam, you do double damage. And I turned damage numbers on in the options menu. Oh, hiya, Boba. But I turned the damage values on in the options menu because I wanted to show just how much Gleam improves your strength. And look at all the eights I'm doing. Look at all the eights. That uppercut I just did. Sorry, that knee uppercut. <laughs> that, went, that did 94 compared to my basic 8 punch, and that's because I gleamed. That's because I dodged his attack, turned red, and I got super, super, super strong. And uh, I would really recommend that. This game doesn't have a counter feature, but every time someone punches for you, swings a baseball bat at you, tries to hit you in some capacity, and you can duck under it, not every attack can be ducked under, but if you duck under attacks, you glow red, and it helps so much. I cannot stress enough that if you're trying to get into this game, gleam as often as you can, because that ability works wonders. Trust me. But uh, the right trigger lets you run. You don't have to double tap the control pad like some beat-em-ups. And you push the L trigger to duck to gleam, but you also do other things after ducking. If you push the punch button while ducking, you can do this sort of sweep motion with your feet to kick out people's feet. Uh, if you push the leg button when you're ducking, you do the big knee rising attack that I used to give 94 damage to a Bobo. And oh look, a Bobo's back! Well, let's just put him on this conveyor belt and have him fall off, why don't we? After I stop getting my ass kicked, Jesus. <laughs> Bye, a Bobo! That, that achievement is specifically for throwing a Bobo down the conveyor belt. And this is the exact same area that was in the, the final... Sorry, the first stage of Double Dragon on the NES. So again, this all looks familiar. This just looks like a remake of Double Dragon. Trust me. Level 2 onwards, this thing's gonna get a lot different, a lot crazier. For this final segment, you're just bouncing this jewel case, this crown, back and forth. It bounces off the sides, even though there's no walls there. <laughs> so you can stay in the middle for the most part and just anticipate where it's going to be, walk over to it, punch it, you know. Get yourself a lot of cash, because cash is going to be used in shops, and the mixtapes I keep picking up are going to be used to upgrade your character's stats. Because this game isn't just a typical beat-em-up thing. Like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, there is a currency shop, like, damage-increasing, stat-increasing kind of system going on, sort of like Scott Pilgrim. Although it's a lot easier going than Scott Pilgrim, and, um... Well, I'm going to show off the mixtapes. Let's go into the options menu and listen to these things. Okay, so these mixtapes have two different things. They can affect your stance, which will affect your stats. I just equipped the Power Gambit, which is going to make my attacks a lot stronger than they were originally. I used to punch 8s, now I'm punching 17s. That's how much it helps. And uh, the more Power Gambit mixtapes I collect, the more they'll stack and accumulate and do more damage the more I collect. So uh, that's why you want to look out for mixtapes. Also this.
Aside from stances, which affect your stats and various other things, you also get special abilities like the Dragon Swarm ability I equipped, which nukes everybody on screen and generally kills them at base one unless they're not Williams, because Williams is a weenie. <laughs> The music in this game is incredible. Jake Kaufman is a composing genius. Hey bro, give me five! God, I love this game so much. We haven't even gotten into the tip of the iceberg with this game, folks. But uh, I switched out my special ability, Dragon Swarm, for the Spin Kick, which is a time and honored tradition of the Double Dragon franchise. It allows Billy to spin in air and kick everything around him in case you're getting surrounded by a whole bunch of guys. And I'm sure to activate it at some point during this. There it is. There's your Spin Kick. <laughs> Your special ability is drained by the electricity meter underneath your health bar, although if you pick up batteries, which can come out of lampposts or anything you beat up really, there's all kinds of things to smash in the 2D levels you go through, but uh, find batteries, you'll refill that energy no problem. Hey look, we found ourselves a shop. Dragon in China shop. Used to be I have booming business. This city was nice once. Now, constantly out of power gambit tapes. A bobo buy them all. Out of whips, out of collar, out of leather corset! I never told you this before, but I have brothers in distant lands. Four twin brothers. They all run shop, too. Please respect their merchandise. Tell them second eldest brother say hi. So every now and then you'll come across a shop in the levels, and you can buy a whole bunch of mixtapes from these shops, as well as full health refills and extra lives in case you're running out and you don't want to get a game over. But, um... It all comes from the cash you're, you're collecting. When you smash up boxes and stuff and cash comes out, that cash is going towards these shops. You're allowed to carry 10 of a particular mixtape right now, but uh, this game does have another shop type that can actually expand the mixtape limit from 10 to 20, and then 20 to 30, and then 30 to 40, and so on, to make this game really amazingly broken. <laughs> when you're fully upgraded. I have a save file of Double Dragon Neon where I can go through all of these levels punching them once and I win. Like they just die from one punch because I have so many Power Gambit mixtapes. <laughs> so again, this has an RPG element, but it is still a fantastic beat-em-up by itself with the gleam ducking feature, the ability to pick up a whole bunch of different weapons and throw them at people and grab people when they're stunned, do your spin kicks, and I just picked up a fireball technique, which I'm going to equip later, which allows me to shoot a Hadouken at people. I can shoot fireballs at people with that particular upgrade. So, um, Double Dragon Neon is incredibly satisfying to play by yourself or with a friend in local co-op. I would recommend playing with your friends in local co-op because this game is fantastic. There's a lot of cool revitalization abilities that co-op games give you where you can do handshakes and or high fives rather to boost your energy and stuff and uh it's pretty good man it's pretty good i wonder what's their name <laughs> well go find out williams go find out but uh, this is the secondary shop i was talking about the tape smith shop he is a blacksmith only with mixtapes. I, I don't know how that works, but it does. <laughs> Found any good song. Have you by chance seen my pal Roper recently? He's a husky fellow, wears a green outfit. We used to toss barrels together on the weekends, but now he's nowhere to be found. Bah! Roper is an enemy from one of the earlier Double Dragon games, but he doesn't show up in Neon, so we're not going to be seeing Roper. But uh, the blacksmith shop, or sorry, the uh, mix tape smith shop, he collects mithril from you, and he can use those mithril to upgrade all of your mixtape capacity. So again, going from 10 to 20, 20 to 30. You only get mithril from defeating boss fights. We haven't seen a boss yet. A bobo is not considered a boss. A bobo is just a regular enemy who happens to be really, really, really strong. 
But there's my fireball. I got that equipped now, so I'll be able to shoot some Hadoukens at people. As always, when you're going through these levels, smash everything you can because you never know when they might drop a bottle of cola. Because apparently, when you're a martial artist like Billy and Jimmy Lee, all you need is Pepsi. All you need is Coca-Cola. <laughs> you know, if you're wounded from a, from a knife wound, you know, if a Bobo gave you a big black eye, just swig some Pepsi and you'll be fine. If Pepsi Man was fighting with the Lee brothers right now, everything would be hunky-dory, let me tell you. There's my fireball, but uh, a Bobo has one a technique that's hard to dodge because he do he does this thing where he puts both of his arms directly to the ground, and that's when you need to sort of roll out. I think way. they went in there. It seems like a trap, but I gotta find Marion. Okay, this is when the game gets batshit insane. <laughs> Jake Kaufman is so good. Seriously. Man, this was a trap. So it turns out the bad guy has a rocket ship, and now we're inside the rocket ship. What am I gonna use? What am I gonna use? I'll use the hair comb. Marion! Who are you? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Skullmageddon. He is the main villain of this game, and we're going to be hearing a lot from him as the game goes on, and uh, he is... He's just a delight. <laughs> I love Skullmageddon so much. But either way, he's our first boss, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he has this thing where he goes off screen, and then he goes in a straight line right across, and if you are in the middle of that green pathway, he will impale you with his sword and drain a lot of health from you, so watch out. He shoots a lot of green fireballs that you can duck under to get your gleam power. He occasionally stops to taunt you like he's Shao Kahn from Mortal Kombat, so you can use those opportunities to beat on him. And uh, he has some pretty great skeleton-related pun quotes when he does that move. Uh, one thing he just did that I was talking over is he says, My! I'm humorous! <laughs> Skullmageddon is amazing. Time to make a marrow escape! <laughs> Found voyage! Seriously, Skullmageddon is amazing. <laughs> There's a trick you can use the hair comb to actually stop him from pulling off his hat and shooting fireballs, but I threw it off screen and I missed him completely, so I didn't get to show off that cool little trick, but uh... Ladies and gentlemen, this is Double Dragon Neon. We haven't scratched the surface. We're... We're only at level 3 of 10 levels in this game, and uh, come back for part 2 while I beat up some more jerks.